Hello and welcome my deja vus. Hello and welcome my deja vus. It's SJB here and we're playing some more chimps for you puppies. Now this one's going to be a fun one and an interesting one because this is the first time ever we're going to be using a water tower to do our chimps gameplay. So let's get going in here, man. I'm going to start off with a sub right about... Uh, because uh, positioning is going to be really important for us. Now, I should mention really quickly, if you guys aren't aware by now, that subs are probably the most powerful base tower that you can get. Uh, they're, they got a good amount of pierce, a good amount of... Um, a decent amount of range over here. Uh, and they're heat-seeking, or balloon-seeking, rather. And all that combined together means they're one of the best starting towers in the game, if you can get them going. And they have a lot of really cheap, easy upgrades that you can get over here that'll actually help you out a lot as well. Pretty much all of them are good. Camera detection, popping leads, does tons of popping power. All of those are really, really good. And then once you finally get to third tiers, you got things that are just going to be extra specially awesome. So, uh, oh, did I say camera detection? Camera detection! And then also giving you unlimited range, kind of. In this situation, our unlimited range is going to be a little bit awkward to use because it's not truly unlimited range. Uh, we get to allow our towers to attack things that also have range that our other towers have. And in this situation, it's going to be a little goofy because we don't really have any land towers that we can use. Except... I'm going to be breaking my seal here for a second here, guys. I'm going to be breaking my usual, uh, usual gameplay. I just, I'm going to guarantee for a fact that we will not beat DDTs with my level and style of DDT gameplay with my subs. I won't be able to do it. DDTs are going to suck so much balls, it's going to be ridiculous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, screw that. I'm going to get a hero that can pop DDTs decently well. And I decided I want to go with an Adora. Now I'm going to put Adora over here. This might seem like a bit of a weird spot, but I re the reason why I want to put her over here is because I want to give, again, my advanced Intel subs some extra range. So she also gets to pop splings as they kind of come in here, which is pretty cool. And as they kind of wrap around over here, she still gets to hit them a little bit and everything, uh, you know, as they're kind of leaving and all that stuff. But she is going to have to be one of my best DDT poppers. Now, she also does not have cam detection automatically. So again, when we think long term in this situation, we've got a decamelize blue tiny reactor or a submerged support. Get her to start popping some balloons really quickly and then have everything else just kind of do clean up and everything. So, uh, as you can tell, we're still already doing very, very good, but I have to do better. So we're going to start off with what I think is one of the most uh, powerful subs in the game, uh, the Ever Start sub. So, one thing to mention is that with the Monkey Knowledge activated, uh, there's there's two things that are going to really, really affect our game here. First of all, Air Burst Darts. Uh, instead of popping into uh, three darts, with Monkey Knowledge, they pop into four darts. So, that's a big chunk of extra popping power for us. Um... And we're losing all of that on chips. So every airburst start you get is just going to be less powerful. That's just kind of how it works. Um, in addition to that, uh, the other thing that we keep in mind is our fifth tier sub commander here, which costs 27 gray. Let's read this thing really quickly. Adds extra pierce and damage to commander and all subs in its radius. So with monkey knowledge, it's everywhere on the screen. Without the monkey knowledge, it does lock us into in the radius um, stuff here. All right, so now that we've got that down, what are we going to do? Well, I was thinking the best thing for us to do is to get another sub and get our camera detection flowing. So I'm going to put him in, in, I don't want to call it a bad spot, but not the most ideal spot ever. We're going to put him a little bit low, a little bit, a little bit low. And we're going to go for a nice, delicious submergent support sub before we're at 24. Now, one thing to keep in mind here with this guy is that he does aut automatically submerge when you get him, but you don't have to leave him submerged. As this tower, he does do some pops. He's got a lot of range, still can pop things, so throw him down over here and let him do his job. In addition, right now, we do have a little popping power, kind of, with Adora. But I still think long term, I think we're better off having a full lead popping power tower and a full lead popping power decambalizer. So I want to go for this guy, a blue tarnum reactor, up to barb darts and heat tip darts, not the twin guns and the uh, uh, airburst darts. That being said, we might go for a second nuclear sub and turn him into our energizer closer to the back to pop a lot of the ceramics. But for now, I just want to make sure I've got that lead popping power over here. Um, just kind of have it i just i don't know i feel really bad if i if i didn't have it i would feel stupid um if i lost to some group lead balloons or lead combo lead purple combos or something like that on round 95 it would just be stupid i would hate it so i want to make sure that doesn't happen so we're going to go for the balloon turn reactor now keep in mind we 
brought this guy out of the ground or out of the water. So when we bother the Plutonium Reactor, we have to remember to put him back under the water. Otherwise, he's just a regular base 0, 0, 0 sub at this point, basically. No, he's a, he's a 2, 0, 0 sub. He has extra range, and that's it. That's it. So if you don't submerge him, he's garbage. With submerging power, he becomes very powerful. So before I get, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go for the barb darts and heat tip darts here. That's a reasonable price to pay, but now I have full lead popping power and some decamelization over here. I'm really hoping that a lot of my balloons get decamelized in this general vicinity. And then if they end up do leaking through there, we still got a big chunk of area where we can decamelize them over here as well. And I don't think there's anything that's fast enough to not get decamelized in this area. But I think there are things that might not get decamelized in this small little area over here. But it's about as close as I can get it with still being in a reasonable spot for over here. Anyways, uh, I know I've talked about all this stuff for a lot here, but if you guys want to just take a quick break, if you guys want to press that like button for me, that would be delicious. I really, really appreciate that, and uh, we're going to talk about my, my actually pretty decent day today a little later on. But for now, uh, I'm going to show you guys the mob, and then we're going to just skip like 20, 30 rounds, because honestly, it's going to be kind of boring. We're going to basically be spamming a lot of triple gun airburst darts combos with not much else in, in, in addition. So we're going to go armor piercing darts here. Same thing with this guy, just get arm piercing darts, and I'll decide what I want to get with it, whether longer range or barb darts later on. I'm assuming that I'm probably going to end up getting mostly barb dart heat tip darts combos, rather than the usually better longer range and advanced intel combo, all because of one thing, DDTs. I know that I'm putting a lot of my, my, my bang and all my buck into DDT popping power, but I really do feel like it's going to be important for us. So no matter what, we're getting triple gun sniper starts, and arm piercing darts on all, most of these guys, but, uh, let's see. Mm, okay, okay, okay. With the door, we do take them down, but we did probably need that ability there. Whew, kind of ridiculous. Anyways, let's jump. I'll see you guys back in, like, 10, 15 rounds. So a surprising amount has actually happened in these past few rounds. Um, the main thing is, is I just spammed a bunch of zero, zero, zero subs. Just kind of base subs for now. Um, and then I also decided to get one more of these guys up to armor piercing darts. <clears throat> and I had to decide which one I wanted to try to get up to my sub commander. Which is going to be a big part of a Oh my god. What the heck is going on? That was uh, surprisingly unexpected if you ask me. I thought we were going to own. Uh, I haven't bought advanced intel or anything on these guys yet. I was trying to like leave that for later. But uh, it might come down to it that we actually do need to get this thing. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, seems like our popping power is a little bit, uh, a little bit low. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm! Okay. Okay, I changed my mind. Uh, I'm actually a little bit worried about- I, I know for a fact that if we get a sub commander, we can defeat, like, everything. He's really, really, really powerful as a hero, or as a tower, uh, fifth year tower, and he supports all my other subs here, which just makes us unbelievably powerful. But, I also am worried that, uh, since I can't even beat round 60, I might struggle against 61, 62, and of course, round 63 if I can't afford my sub commander. So I decided to go for something that's going to work really, really well for 63 as well, which is our balloon totem reactor. Um, this guy I decided to go for a 402 this time around. And the reason why I decided to do that was because I don't really feel like I need the lead popping power all the way in the backpack here. This guy is my lead popping power or my de-leadification thing. And then this guy is just here to pop all the balloons. So that's the plan, man. Question is, will round 63 be a problem for us with two nuclear subs and a bunch of subs here? I really, really hope not. Otherwise, I'm going to be kind of upset with myself and realize that I should not have built any of these low-tier subs at all. Oh, my goodness. So, again, we have spent all of my money. Uh, I bought, bought a bunch of Airburst Start subs. That's what I decided to do. And it looks like it comes out just clutch enough, but again, it leaves us further and further away from our sub commander, which is the main guy that we need to survive in the late game. So uh, even though this kind of sucks, it's actually going to be a bit of a struggle to get that other $10,000 here because these give you such little amounts of money. So we will be back soon and hopefully have Sub Commander and show you how absolutely beef-tastic this boy is. Woo! Sub Commander! Here we use! All right, so don't forget Sub Commander again is only going to power up things that are in his range. So that is all of these guys, no problem. It will include him. It will include him. And it will... Include him! But it does not include him, of course. And that actually works out really, really well, because I was not sure if this guy was also going to be get sub commander. Um, in addition, you can tell if we build a new sub, it does not automatically get sub commander unless it would have been in range of whatever we did. You can see it kind of like pop up, even though we can't actually build it. So uh, it's kind of nice to know that uh, we did a really, really, really good job as far as positioning goes with these guys. But now we get the tricky question. What are we worried about the most? 
And I think I actually don't know the answer to that. So I'm going to have to upgrade as I lose in chips mode, which is really, really, really weird. But basically, if I struggle against the balloons, I will have to buy something uh, uh, long range advanced intel type stuff. If I struggle against the DDTs, then I must buy all uh, heat tip darts. So uh, I don't know, man. I really don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to buy it as we start to lose. The other thing is we do have two subs that are not on the screen yet that we can um, uh, get if we want to that are not involving the sub commander. We can buy our energizer. Um, this really won't work well with what I would want it to do, which I, you know, I would want to, you know, level up Dora, uh, Dora a little bit faster or whatnot. It does not seem like that's going to be even in the cards here, whether it's mispositioned or not. I don't know, um, but I didn't think ahead like that. Uh, and then we can also build the middle paths up, which we have not talked about at all. This is the first strike capability, or the preemptive strike, if we want to go all the way up to this guy. It's about 50 grand to get these two guys going. Um, but if you do decide to go for that, you're going to automatically damage a lot of the balloons, well, all the Moab class balloons as they come in, and that can also affect DDTs very easily as well. So that tower might actually be the better tower for us to go for. But again, it's all going to be dependent on how much money we make, how we're making it, and whether or not it's even going to be useful at that time that we actually get it. The other thing that we got going for us is we do have Adora's abilities, which I have not been using very much at all, um, but they're available to us. So we could even sacrifice things if we really want to, but I don't think I want to do that, if at all possible. But against Blooms, 78. It's a big chunk of ceramics. We're taking them down, no problem. Let's check out round 79. Should be a breeze as well. Round 80 shouldn't be too bad either because we have a crap ton of projectiles. Uh, but then after that, free play, man. Sub Commander can only go so far. Uh, and I will tell you, this is this is where it gets really funky because the Sub Commander still does not have his cross paths either. And this is a big deal to me because I would much rather have the longer range and advanced intel because he can see everywhere on the map. Give him just generally tons of popping power. But again, that DDT issue, bro, it could be devastating for us. I really don't want to have to deal with that. It could just make us lose the game automatically. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, maybe it'll just be super duper easy and subs are just that powerful that it just doesn't matter that I'm thinking about any of this stuff. But usually if you're doing some sort of sub play, you've got villages, you've got other support towers like alchemists and things, and I do not have any of those today for myself. So I have to think about what I'm going to do to the best of my ability without any of those extra support towers. And that is a big deal, my friends. Here we go. Adora's ability for around 80 here. Let's use it up to start off because uh, it's a very good Moab popper. And then uh, we'll wait until he wraps around, if he even does wrap around, to use my second ability here. But this is his, oh my god, he's pretty beefy. Uh, but, whoa, very impressive, man. The balloon popping power is really good, but how will we will we fare against the super ceramics? I, oh man, all right, this is going to be a good, good example and a good test for us. But this is why advanced intel is not that important. As the balloons come in, we pop them. Um, I don't really want to have to chase too much unless I absolutely have to, so I'd rather focus on just popping power. You know what? I think I've made an executive decision. I think that the preemptive strike is probably our best bet. It's going to be the best bet for DDT popping power. Probably switch this guy into a long-range advanced intel sub, and then get everybody else to basically air burst That's probably our best bet. I would think. I would think. So I'm going to start buying him, and we're going to pop this guy in the backpack here. I don't think it matters that he's uh, uh, in range of my sub commander at all. I don't think that's going to give us any real... Uh, ooh, this guy's not afraid at all, is he? Yeah. And he's in range of this. Okay, let's do this guy. I don't think it matters much if he's in range of the, the sub commander, but I'm just going to do it anyways, because if he gives me any extra popping power, it's worthwhile for me. There we go. We're going to go for a strike already, and we're going to save out another $10,000, which is not that hard to get on route 83 to 85. These are big rounds with big chunks of money coming into play. And we've got a first strike avail uh, available as well. If we ever want to use that crap, super effective against all my gods and stuff, man. So, uh, yeah, looking pretty good so far. I am actually super impressed with how good these subs are doing, dude. Woo! Spicy! Look at that. We got almost all the money we needed in just one round. Alright, let's first strike this puppy. Take it down. I'm gonna go for the uh, Adora abilities here right from the get-go, and I think we're gonna, you know, slice right through this uh, double zone god rush. Shouldn't be a problem. And then for future rounds, any low-tier Moabs, regular Moabs, even low, low BFBs and things, Brip Strike is gonna be boss. Absolutely boss. Alright, big chunk of balloons. Doesn't seem to matter to us. We slice through them. Um, I'm going to first strike again because it's going to give me enough money here, I think. Uh, not quite yet. Use all our abilities. We get the preemptive to strike. Okay, it's not going to matter for this round at all. But for future rounds, hopefully it will. Now, uh, it seemingly, seemingly, so far at least, the super ceramics, super reinforced ceramics, are not a problem at all. 
I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. So we go to First Strike again. Why not? Does a little bit of extra damage to the Zoma Gods over here as well. And I'll just use all my abilities early. Pop through the Zoma God layer is kind of the big problem for us at this point. And, uh... Uh... I think that's the best way that we can play this game. Just use our abilities right away as we see them. As we get them. All right, round 88 here. Again, preemptive strike doing a beautiful job here. Taking down BFBs down into Moabs. Just like that. One thing that kind of sucks about that is that they came out pretty quick. So, like, if we have to deal with a bunch of bugs coming out at, like, the end of a round, preemptive strike could actually cause you to have too much buildup of ceramic pop power. You can't actually, uh like time it properly you don't get to decide how you want to pop the mobs by attacking them first or not so it, even though this guy is very very good he does have a, a couple of smidge of low low lying downfalls like it's really not that bad but they could end up coming into play in really weird situations all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go since i got ever starts on everybody so far i believe um i think i'm gonna go to triple guns on everybody as well all right, here we go, round 90. This is a good test, though. This is a very good test for us. How are we going to do against DDTs? Will this guy DDT cannibalize them? Okay, it did, it did, and it did. All three DDTs got decambalized, then we obliterated it! I think it was Preemptor Strike that actually got it, so... I think. Hmm. Okay, that makes me think that, uh, you know, I think that I want to go for more advanced intels, then. If that's going to be the case. So we're going to go triple guns, advanced intel, and triple guns with advanced intel on these two. And then I'm going to gauge what I want to do next, because I I could go for a lot of upgrades on these guys, or I could save up all the way for an Energizer. And if I'm really worried about balloons, Energizer is the way to, way to go. It just is that powerful. These guys, they're already almost as powerful as they're going to get. Any extra upgrades, they will help, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to be as effective as getting an Airburst Starts, because the Airburst Starts is the most powerful thing, and I cannot build more Airburst Starts sub in the range of this guy. That's where his range goes. That's all I've got. All right. Um, the next big tough round for us is round 94. Tons of balloons coming on that round. Also, tons of money flowing into our pocket here. Let's see if the preemptive strike is just going to insta kill all three DDTs again. Boom, 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 and boom. All DDTs are dead. Beautiful, beautiful. Do not ignore the fact that you will need some lead popping power here. So, some of these guys just absolutely have to be heat tip darts. So, I'm going to go for a couple of them. Let's go for three of them up to heat tip darts. All right. This corner right here will be our heat tip archers. Uh, and we'll see how round 95 goes. I assume that round 95 will go just as easy as the previous rounds because of a preemptive strike. I think that's uh, how it's going to go down. And then, uh, really, realistically, the next tough round for us is 96 could be difficult, but it's really not too bad. But 98, I mean, that's the biggest balloon round in the game by far. We do have a preemptive strike to help out a little bit against the, mo the uh, mob layers, but really it's the balloons inside that are the problem. And that might be where our energizer comes into play. Chopping down all the ceramic layers on the inside, leaving every one of these subs on strong or something like that. I know I'm leaving a lot to uh, possibilities here, but because I'm not really sure how it's going to go down. I never, ever, ever build this many subs, and if I do, I always have support towers with them. So this is unexpectedly weird for me. All right, round 95, unbelievably easy. <laughs> a preemptive strike, bro. It, it's powerful. Very powerful. I don't even have any of the cross paths either. Doesn't seem to matter much. And all these BFBs getting blown up here. Tons of ceramics. Tons of extra stuff. Holy crap. All right, let's go for a little bit of extra popping power here with the door's ability. Uh, we've got some zombie gods coming. In. We're going to first strike one of them. I might first strike uh, the Bean Around 97 as well here, but I've got enough money. I can decide if I want to go Energizer or not. But again, until I, I'm ready to lose, I don't think I want to spend my money, man. I want to wait until I'm going to lose to decide what I want to get because I still have so many op options available to me. So we've got another first strike. Just chop this guy down. Door ability. Get rid of the first zombie god. And then the second zombie gird should go down. I'm hoping to get all my abilities back before our 98 comes out, though. That would be nice. It'd make me feel feel good about myself. While we could just first strike it and clean it up, it's better off just waiting it out and uh, playing it effectively here. Playing it smart. Smart is the key word here. All right, so you can tell Super Ceramic's getting pretty beefy at this point. Pretty beefy at this point. All right, so we've got the money for it. I think the first thing I want to try is an Energizer. All right, and again, this is where I spent all my money. Uh, it'll be... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's way worse against the bad balloon, but I've got first strike. So I should be able to take down the bad pretty easily. Round 99 is the next big problem, but I, I could still buy more of these guys up to heat tip darts and stuff. So I'm not too worried, man. Here we go. First, first strike. We're going to go for early abilities here. We're going to hope that we might be able to wrap around and get a second set of abilities up in here. But see, Energizer's really got to come into play here against these super ceramics, man. Um, super reinforced ceramics, I should mention. Another first strike on these Oh My Gods. We're cleaning up most of the reinforced BFB so far, though. That's the good news. 
And we kind of want to wait until the Zomai Gods to the last second because those are regular Zomai Gods, not reinforced. And it looks like we're doing a good job of killing just the ones that we want to. Last first strike here, doing a big chunk of damage here. We're going to save both of Adora's abilities, if possible, for row 99, just in case some big chunk of DDTs come in here and the pre emptive strike is not strong enough. And it looks like best thing for me to do is, I think, get the uh, heat tip darts with triple guns across the board. Triple guns, triple guns. And uh, we'll even get an armor piercing darts on this guy. Uh, and we do defend. All right, round 99 now. I'm going to save my uh, abilities unless I have to use them. We're going to see if we'll uh, just kill these reinforced EDTs. And preemptive strike. Beautiful. It, preemptive strike just take down reinforced EDTs, bro. I did not think that was possible. I don't know why that happened, but I love it. I love it. And oh my god, here we go. This bad should be a breeze. I was worried this entire game this was going to be super chaotic and terrible. And it was so easy. So easy. I mean, it's not over yet. Things could still go awry. But here we go. Oh, oh, DDTs. We don't get to preempt strike of those guys. We don't get to preempt strike those guys. Oh, crap. Oh, cra easy. Did I did I say easy? Whoopsie doodles. All right. So we're just going to save both of our Adora abilities here. Um, I think that's my best bet. I'm going to get two first strikes at the very least. Uh, I guess my, maybe my big problem is or maybe I need to build some sort of nuclear sub in the middle over here or something. Or maybe I could even sacrifice one of my subs to get another nuclear sub over here instead. Uh, so here we go. You're going to use our abilities. It did get decamelized. All right. Okay. We do take down the DDTs. These oh my god should be pretty breezy. All right. First strike it anyways. Bam. Shazam. And we take down round 100. What kind of cool little monkey are we going to get? How about attack shooter? Give me attack shooter. That would be beautiful. Oh, a ninja. Okay. All right. I'll take a ninja. He's cool. He's cool. He's cool. He's cool. We're all cool in the book. All right. There we go. Our uh, preemptive strike, 692k. Did a good job. But really, it was the squad. The squad was what did a good job here. All of these guys, which are not much money at all. Uh, yeah, These are like $4,000 towers max, man. And we're, we're dominating. 70,000 pops for one of these puppies. It's all thanks to our sub-commander here. What's interesting about the sub-commander is I never even got the cross paths on this guy. Huh. Huh. Oh my god, I was always leaving it open to decide what I wanted to get. And I, I guess I could have just went advanced until this entire time. Beautiful. Alright, so I know, I know, I know that we will not survive very long here. But you know what? Why the heck not? Well, we've got it available to us. We're still insta-killing DDTs with a pre strike. I feel like that's got to be new. I... Uh, I don't get it. I remember them being much, much more problematic to me, even after a preemptive strike. So, I, I don't know what's going on. But any which way, we're doing great here. We're even gonna... Can we break our new record here? We've never gotten past run 103 on Chimps mode with these solo things. Let's see if we can beat run 103 this time. This is a beefy, beefy, beefy round, though, guys. A lot of DDTs, but you know what? With this guy, DDTs might not be a problem at all. All right. Great job by our Energizer here, cleaning all these puppies up. There's a lot of balloons we got to deal with here. It's a lot of balloons we got to deal with here. Um, dang. Okay. All right. I don't think we're going to take this thing down. This is just too beefy for us. It's just got to be too beefy. We're only going to give it one shot, though. Too many ceramics trying to sneak through our defense. Energizer's trying to keep up here. We're going to have Adora's ability come at just the right time here. And it looks like, oh, my God. We got a chance. No guarantee. We got a chance. It's going to be close. Dora's ability. It's all up to you. Will the ball of light last? And it does last. And we get our new world record of chips run for me personally with subs only. I feel like that's what they always do with all of the uh, uh, crazy stats for all of like the uh, sports and everything. They're like, this is the first time ever that has happened that this guy has gotten 13 double-double rebounds at the same time that it was in uh, September on a Tuesday. During a full moon, uh, yeah, but I, I, but it actually happens every every game besides that, you know, it, without all those restrictions that we put on it. Dang, and if you beat run 103, it seems like you can go deep. All right, so what are we going to do here? Um, I guess we're buying uh, armor-piercing darts on everybody. I think that's my best bet here, armor-piercing darts on everybody. If we got the money for it, let's do it. And we could go run 110. I think we could do it. Oh, that would be straight up unbelievable. Subs only. So you guys usually rank my uh, rank the towers, and whenever I, uh, I I hear people say that subs are the best tower in the game, I'm always like, man, eh, you know, like maybe I guess they're pretty good. Uh, this this is gonna you know this is a very very good argument to why the subs are the best tower in the game. Getting very close here to losing, 
Adora's Ball of Light coming up soon. But it doesn't matter. One yellow balloon is all it took to take us down. Round 107, guys. Beautiful. And this guy, look at the amount of pops he changed up from round 100 to 107. He more than doubled it. That's insane. It's awesome, though, at the same time. <laughs> yeah, look at that. One yellow balloon. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to press that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.